Welcome back. This week we're going to be talking about what is under the transgender umbrella. So transgender is an umbrella word, um, which means it's a really broad word um, and a bunch of smaller, more specific words can fit underneath it. So someone who is transgender or trans or trans a little star at the end, um, broadly speaking, there's someone who's changing their gender in some way. Um, so the gender they identify as currently, the way they feel, is different from the gender they were assigned at birth. When they came out, the doctor looked between their legs and said, it's a boy or it's a girl. Um, they're like, no, that's not me. They fall into the transgender umbrella somewhere. Um, a word that's often confused with transgender is transsexual, which is different. It's very specific, actually. So someone who's transsexual is either plans to or has already um, physically changed their body, their sex, to align with their gender identity. So this can be through hormones or through surgery. Um, they're changing their body. Um, some people don't like the word because they think it's really medical and clinical, so just be careful about using it. And also, not all trans people are transsexual. Some people don't make physical changes to their body, and that's awesome. That's fine. Um, sometimes you'll hear with those things like MTF or FTM. Those stand for MTF is male to female, and FTM is female to male. Um, that's is sort of like a way to help people figure out your transition a little bit. Um, it's important, though, not to assume that all trans men are FTM or that all trans women are MTF um, because some people are intersex. Intersex people, um, for whatever reason, when they come out, it's hard for the doctor to classify into, the, um, into that boy-girl binary, which means we need more categories, but someday. Um... So maybe they have ambiguous genitalia or reproductive organs or hormone levels or chromosomes or something is different from that boy-girl norm, um, and they're intersex. And intersex people may identify as trans based on their gender identity, um, and so it's just important not to assume that everyone came from a binary place in their transition. Finally, I do want to talk about the word cross-dresser. Um, you may have heard the word transvestite. That's not okay to use anymore. It's just... A pejorative term these days. Um, so cross-dresser is the way to go. Cross-dressers are people who wear clothes that are commonly associated with a different gender from the one they identify as. So it can be for comfort level reasons. It could just be because they think it looks better. So like a man who likes to wear skirts because he just thinks his, his legs look great in skirts. Like that's awesome. Um, it could be a sexual thing, but it isn't necessarily... Um, and it's important to note it's different from drag. Drag is specifically a performance. Cross-dressing isn't a performance. It's just how you want to dress. Um, yeah, so that's all for this. I'm going to throw it over to Xander, who's got some really cool non-binary terms for you. Well, thanks, Michael. I wanted to sound like a newscaster. This is my serious face. Oh, I am talking about various non-binary identities. Um, I'm going to start with genderqueer, which is sometimes used as an umbrella term for, like, any non-binary identity. A definition would be someone who expresses gender in a non-normative manner. However, um, it, there's not really one definition of genderqueer. A lot of people who use it have their own definition. Another term is bigender, which is someone who identifies as more than one gender at the same time, um, in that they could identify, for example, as a man and as a woman, and a lot of bigender people have, like, two separate personas, like a male persona and a female persona, or there are bigender people who just sort of identify as both, but not necessarily with the separate personas, or there's kind of shades in between. There's also agender, which is someone who identifies as not having a gender, someone who's genderless. There's also a term that a lot of people identify as a gender use that I'm going to put on the screen because I don't know how to say it and there's not really a consensus on how it's said. Um, so I'm not going to try because I don't like embarrassing myself. There are also a couple other um, non-binary identities that uh, I'm going to talk about for sort of a different reason. That's a teaser. I'll get into it. So one of them is Two-Spirit, which is um, used in Native American cultures to um, describe people in their community who are gender variant in, in whatever way. It's often like someone who em uh, embodies both a masculine and feminine spirit. This isn't okay for people who are not Native American to use. There's a lot of discussion about it, but it's it's cultural appropriation. It's not okay if you're not part of that culture. You, it, it, you know, it's one of those things you don't, you have, don't have that experience, so it's not a term that's okay for you to use. Um, another one is third gender, which there's a lot of people 
um, in different cultures who are described as third gender, which is like um, the Hijra in India. Um, it is important to know that um, a lot of places they have their own words for this. Third gender is a term basically that white people use to describe um, people in other cultures who didn't fit into the like Western idea of a gender binary. So again, it's not really something that like white people from America should should necessarily be using. That's a nice primer of identities under the transgender umbrella. I will see you guys next week. I'm going to do a video by myself so you get to look at this face the whole time.